Yes, sir. Thank you. Hindi ko, apo. Diba? Uh. Yan yung binubuli naman. Para sa tao yun. Apo, apo. apo. Yung pong pagkatapos na, in our case, saba po yung ginamit at saka yung saba na mabuto. I don't know kung ano yung tawag doon. Yung wala pong, wala pong gamit. No? Angkat maaari yung hindi natin. Kasi bakit mo nga naman titigpasin yung kakainin mo. No? In, in the same way, dun po sa water lily, yung aerial part, hindi po yung, hindi po yung uh, root part. No? Kasi baka yun yung malapit dun sa heavy metal. Ang heavy metal nagsisettle sa ilalim. So baka maybe yung accumulation ng heavy metal ay less dun sa aerial part. I don't know. Hindi pa kami nakagawa ng gano'n na And localization. Then, like to add lang sa pasture na, si, na figures na sinasabi mo. Yes, so, mayroon pa siguro na dalawang milyong hektarya na nasa ilalim ng lumen na pwede nyo gawin pastila. Okay. Sige po. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yan po. Si, si Dean Sopanko po yung isa sa mga pasimuno ng banana water lily. <laughs> Joke us, please. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Salamat po. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Angela, so we now call Dean, uh, Dr. Lautos, and to our paper presenter, Dr. Catherine Ann Israel from the Institute of Food Science and uh, Technology. Good morning, everyone. So I'm the last, but definitely not the least. The most beautiful daw, sabi ni Ma'am Jo. Agree? Kasi ako lang yata babaeng nag-present ngayong umaga. <laughs> okay, so, um, medyo iba po yung presentation namin. Kasi syempre, dapat mag-stand out kami. Joke lang. Hindi, kasi um, we, uh, for our institute, we decided to present the highlights of the re researches of um, some of us, so there are um, four of us here in this list, uh, Dr. Lotis Mopera, Dr. Florendo Flores, Dr. Baby Richard Navarro, and yours truly. Uh, we have compiled our research researches which are under um, the umbrella of um, functional food. So the title is uh, IFST Engaging in Functional Foods and food safety of indigenous Philippine produce as intervention modalities for food security. Okay, so I will be presenting first my work and then um, to be followed by the work of my other colleagues. Okay. So I would like to highlight my work on the extraction and characterization of pectin from various fruit processing waste. So uh, the uh, uh, fruit processing industry in the Philippines has been growing in the recent years. We have been producing um, fruit concentrates, um, banana chips, ketchup, etc. And along with um, the increase okay, in the production of the um, fruit process, processed fruit products, Next slide, please. Okay. There has been um, 
a lot of generated uh, waste material okay, in the form of peels and other uh, inedible fruit parts. So what happens to this um, waste material? They just go to the landfills and they, um, they degrade there and they generate methane and carbon dioxide emissions which contribute to pollution. Okay, now let's um, look into the value of these pills. So these are actually the waste materials from fruit processing, but actually um, this, this pills, uh, medyo na distort po yung slide. Okay, pero, so we have a pill waste generated um, about 30 to 50 percent of the fruit is actually in the form of so they just, they just become waste materials. But um, a, lot, a huge part of the pills comprise pectin, which is um, a valuable food ingredient. And uh, it's used as stabilizers, um, thickeners. In the pharmaceutical industry, it's also used as binder. And it's also... Um, a potential prebiotic, as it is um, a polysaccharide. Okay. Now, it, presently, the source of pectin in the food industry comes from citrus peels and apple pomis, which are imported. Now, uh, the pectin is a part of the plant cell wall. It is involved in fruit ripening. It is degraded during ripening. It's composed of a polysaccharide of polygalacturonic acid. Some units are methylated. So the property of your pectin actually depends on its chemical structure, um, specifically the methylation, which when it's, it, the methyl group is removed, it becomes charged. So it can interact with acids and sugars, etc. So, um, I looked into the possibility of giving value to that waste product by extracting the pectin and possibly um, uh, studying it to compare it with the commercial, commercially available pectin that we use. Okay. So the objective of my project is to determine the potentials of various fruit processing waste products a source of pectin for food applications. So um, to utilize this material for um, extraction, optimize the extraction parameters, characterize the physical and chemical properties of the extracted pectin, and apply it to certain food products to test its comparability with the commercially available one. Okay, so what has been done in my project? So, so in, in 2014, um, I, I started this work under the Ched Fernet project. And uh, I was able to come up with this um, preliminary study which was published at the International Food Research Journal, a Scopus listed journal. Okay. So it's a preliminary study on the potential of the, the Saba banana peel pectin as a uh, peel, a source of pectin. So in the study, next slide, uh, I just, it's a simple one. So it's a, um, a preliminary study on the determination of the, the acid, okay, acid um, for extraction, so I used hydrochloric acid and citric acid. And then I compared the ripe and the unripe pills and compared it with the commercial citrus pectin for various chemical parameters. And then used it in strawberry jam formulation compared with the commercial pectin. So we found out that there's no difference between the two types and the Parameters showed that um, the unripe, the unripe peel is better as a source of pectin because of the 
comparable parameters with Android, with the commercial and also the the unripe bananas are the ones used for fruit processing for banana chips for ketchup so it's an ideal raw material for pectin extraction okay and then um, I advanced to another stage because the result was promising in my 2014 project. So I, I proposed at ECWRG, so you all know it's just a small project, but um, I'm trying my best to do, uh, do most of, a uh, lot of work out of it. So now I, I'm conducting... Um, not just um, study on Saba banana peel, but we also studied um, mango, guyabano, passion fruit. Um, this time, using enzymatic extraction compared with acid extraction, because enzymatic um, extraction would yield lesser chemical waste. So we want it to be environment friendly. Okay. And then again, characterize the various pectins extracted using different microbial enzymes. So these were the results. So for um, the yield, okay, relatively we had higher yields for passion fruit, saba, and mango. And low yields were obtained from guyabano using uh, cellulase, silanase, alpha amylase, and pectinase, and compared it with um, your with hydrochloric acid for acid extraction, and still higher higher yields were obtained from acid extraction compared with microbial enzyme extraction. Okay, and then for the characterization, so lower molecular weight pectins were obtained from acid extraction compared with enzymatic extraction since the harsh conditions of the acid extraction caused the uh, degradation of the pectin. So the, the, the application of the pectin would uh, depend on its structure. So merong mga applications na mas gusto yung smaller molecular weight, merong higher molecular weight. Okay, next slide. Then ongoing studies. Okay, we, uh, I'm, I have some students now working on the optimization of the acid extraction protocol for, for Saba Banana okay, using response surface methodology. And then application of the extracted Saba Banana Peel Pectin for uh, fruit coating to delay uh, ripening. Then a microwave-aided extraction of Saba Banana Peel Pectin to um, again lessen the use of acids and nanopectin for food applications. So I'm proud that that small work that I did in 2014 um, won a second runner up in the 2016 Ched Republica Award. Yeah, so that was my milestone. And yeah, medyo malabo yung picture, so hindi nyo kita kung ilang digits. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Secret. <laughs> okay, next slide. And um, so the next slides will be about the researches of my colleagues. Okay, first is the utilization of indigenous root crops as potential prebiotic. Okay, by Dr. Lotis Mopera, our director, Dr. Olivia Del Rosario, and Ara Fatima C. Algar. Okay, so they are studying prebiotics, which are um, the non-digestible um, polysaccharides, which are used by probiotics, not in our gut. So um, its increasing, its demand has been increasing in the past years. Okay, next slide. So. They identified certain root crops as potential prebiotics. Okay. So particularly ube okay, and um, sweet potato. So the objective is to process root crops into flour, okay, considering application as prebiotic. 
and then determine the effect of root crop flour on the growth of some selected gastrointestinal bacteria in vitro to evaluate its prebiotic potential and evaluate the prebiotic um, components of the flour. Okay, next slide. So, these were their initial findings that two varieties of ube were found to exhibit high prebiotic activity even higher the, than the yakon, which has established prebiotic activity due to its fructooligosaccharide content. Ayan. And also, ayan, so it's yako and then also higher than the phos itself. So, and it also has been found to have specificity for certain microorganisms. So here, three, three lactobacillus species were compared. Okay, next slide. And also, they found out that um, these two, two varieties of ube had high resistant starch content, which possibly is the source of its prebiotic activity. Okay, next slide. So conclusions, the, the prebiotic flour added to the culture medium in vitro increased the cell density of the selected prebiotic lactic acid bacteria and the resistant starches and dietary fiber might play a role in the prebiotic potential. Okay, recommendation, so different concentrations of flour should be tested for its prebiotic potential and other Philippine root crops could be also explored and supplementation to different food products such as infant formula and others could be used also. Okay, then then uh, this uh, other study is by Dr. Florendo Flores. So it's in collaboration with the College of Veterinary Medicine. It's entitled The In Vitro Release Properties and In Vivo Biochemical Activities of Micro-encapsulated anthocyanin extracts prepared with Duhat and Bignay, funded by the EIDR. Okay, so as a background, um, micro-encapsulated extracts from fruits allow continuous diet supplementation with bioactives from seasonal fruits. And there is a gap between antioxidant research on bioactives from Philippine fruits and the actual health benefits obtained in vivo. So a successful implementation of the project will possibly lead to stable bioactive extracts for food and health, health applications in, vid, in vivo and in vitro. So we, they studied Duhat and Bignay. So the main objective is to produce the micro capsules of anthocyanin okay, and study this in vivo and in vitro meth, in methods and, in, and determine whether it's um, it has bioactivity. Next slide. So specific objectives. Okay, next slide, please. So this is the, they, they have two projects. First is the encapsulation, extraction, production of, and the study of the in vitro release. And then study two, project two, involves now the, next slide. Next slide, the, in vivo health effects. So this is on rat studies to be conducted by the College of Veterinary Medicine. Okay, next slide. And then the last, the last uh, researcher I will feature is Dr. Baby Richard Navarro. So he has several researches on beverage and fermentation research. Okay, so first is the isolation of lactic acid bacteria from uh, firm traditionally fermenta fermented foods. Okay. This is his Balik PhD um, program um, research. Okay. So, uh, next slide. And then the isolation of um, probiotics from buro for, for improvement of poultry products. And a research co in collaboration with Korea. And then the tea, tea production from Philippine indigenous flowers. So as he has been studying the flower tea, okay, and he wants to promote flower tea in our country, which is already popular in Korea. And then flower tea 
infusion of Philippine fruit wines to add flavor to the wine. And then the use of microbial cellulose as casing material for longanisa. Okay, thank you. Again, beautiful. Palakpakan. Hindi ko beautiful yung presentation. Joke only. All right, my question. Really, this not really a question, but I think it's a matter of what motivated those researchers to conduct those studies. In other words, ano yung motivation nila bakit yung naginawa ng study? Number one. Number two, ang gaganda naman pinakita, wala mo lang patikim. <laughs> Alright, joke only. Um, okay, motivation. Well, for me, for my research, sir, um, I was motivated to utilize actually the Saba. Okay? Because the project initially was to utilize underutilized um, crops in Quezon. So one of our identified uh, crops is Saba. So that's just a part of my study. Um, I had the utilization of the, saba, uh, the banana blossom, the fruit, and then the peel. So I wanted to make use of the whole fruit and uh, such that there should be as much as possible no waste. So. I identified the pectin as some um, high-value product that can be obtained from that waste material. Then for the others, maybe uh, Mam Lotis could uh, give the motivation of the prebiotic. Good morning, Paul. I was one of the contestants for one of the researchers for the presentation. Hey, the motivation for the development of the probiotic from the root of is actually uh, when, I, when I arrived from my PhD in Japan, I saw a couple of sacks of ube lurking around, lying around in my office in the laboratory. I said, "Ko, bakit mo nang ano nang ginagawa dito sa mga ube na to?" So uh, and then I, I start searching literature and then uh, find out. That you know, this uh, ube, aside from what we're doing, that uh, developing it into product can actually be utilized as a source of probiotic. Okay, so it kind of um, giving a scientific basis or a, a claim to the promotion of our product, <laughs> the ube powder that is made in IST. And I think most of our studies is actually like that. Okay, yung kung ang ang basis po naman is actually provide scientific basis for the claims of the berries, the fermented products, because you know the the products are already there, but you know the functional food research is up and not up and coming. It's really actually there already. So we wanted as an institute to give more information to people why we should consume these products that have been developed. Yung po. Thank you. Thank you. So, sir, okay lang po si Dr. There's another question here. We have very good researchers, but I do not notice um, much collaboration with the private industry. The Institute of Food Science and uh, ISSP. Ay, anong tayo dito? Ang malaking potential niya is with the uh, private and industry. Ang IFS, di ba, ay may plano to aggressively connect with the private sector so that we can increase uh, the R&D. Uh, so our director can answer the question. Okay, well, it's actually in the pipeline. Okay, if, uh, I think you were here last month during my presentation. Most of our researchers were actually be involved in the development of several like, uh, products, okay? 
And uh, given that situation, we will be collaborating with, I think we already, San Miguel was already a sponsor for one of the faculty grants. Okay, I think we got that one already. So in terms of product development, um, ito po. Uh, medyo ang ginagawa ko po namin ngayon is we are gauging what the industry needs in terms of uh, say beverage development or product development. But in terms of collaboration in research, medyo marami pong lumalapit sa amin on product development. Okay, so for instance, not uh, exactly private companies. Eh. Uh, we have BA Smart, and then we have BOST 4A. But so private companies po, uh, hindi talaga on the collaborative research, and but more on the uh, engaging us in the product development. Okay, and then sa business aspect po ng industriya, wala pa po kami collaboration in terms of research together with them. Ah, I think nung bata ko si Dr. Villarreal, mas bata ako. Ang todo ko na ano, meron na yung mga history, etc. And ang galing nung gooey powder nyo, I'm just wondering, ano nangyayari sa products na food science? Wala pa po yata ako nun. So, hindi na po masasagot ko anong nangyayari in between <laughs> Phil Soy and... But anyway po, okay. Phil Soy, we, by the directive of the dean, we actually tried uh, reviving Phil Soy during our uh, anniversary. Okay? So, we just... Um, we we're just trying to more, uh, innovate. Okay, the, the packaging, because as you know, the market has already evolved. <laughs> okay, from the time that Pilsen was launched some decades ago. Okay, so Open Powder naman po, it is a product together with the DA. Okay, so, nakompleto na po yung, um, actually it's a mature technology. The, the process is already established, the packaging material, and it has already uh, reached until the shelf stability test, so meron na po lahat yung data. Now, who is gonna take it? Parang yun yung question ni Ma'am, no? Meron ba kami uh, target or potential uh, taker? The answer is, honestly, wala po. But for the wines, so many people are asking food science um, if they can be consignees, okay, for the wine. But our problem is, ito po, ito ha? Food science doesn't have yet an LTO. Okay? We need a license to operate in order for us to actually sell the product, our products, commercially in bigger volumes. And uh, incidentally, related to that, the RDFIC of Region 4, and as soon as uh, we have renovated the pilot plant, it is already GMP compliant. We will be applying for a license to operate, and then after that, you ask people if uh, we can now sell our products uh, in full scale commercially. Kasi po, we cannot. Um, you po, binabenta namin na mga wines actually. Uh, uh, hindi po, it's safe to sell it, but. Officially, we do not have a license to operate, okay? Kasi we're not a com manufacturing company. Okay, yun po yung, yung totoo doon. That's, that's the truth, okay? So, kaya po nga, we renovate yung pilot plant, then we will comply with the GMP, and then we can uh, fu be full blast on the commercial production. Nako! Bigay kayo na bigay sa akin yung pala wala kayong license to operate. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, gusto kong sakyan yung comment ni Professor Patenya. I think it is very useful. I said this to the strategic plan of the Institute of Plant Breeding. It is very important that early in the game, you connect with the industry. Huwag 
Ngayon hintayin lumapit sa inyo. Kayo ang lumapit. Very important yun. Halimbawa, mga about 50 years ago, nung nagkisimula ang seed industry, wala namang vegetable seed industry. Lahat ng seeds imported, nire-repack nila. So we befriend with the people in the industry, And uh, pretty soon, nagkaroon sila ng semblance of uh, seed company. And then later on, nakipagtaya pang Pilipino sa Dutch, nagkaroon ng East West Seed Company. In other words, kinakailangan pumunta kayo mismo. Lapitan ninyo. Huwag kayong maghintay na kayo ang lapitan. Uh, I think that's very important. Ano? Ngayon, yung, yung to go into commercial, uh, mas possible siguro limitan ninyo yun. Connect also the industry. Let the industry do it because they can do it better. All right. A simple reminder na uh, tayo talagang lalabas. Okay. I think in the last two that I attended, I, I listened and uh, digested some very important developments here at the UP College of Agriculture and food science. Talagang mararabi kong kilabo tayo sa agham. Ngayon kung paano pakikinabangan yan ng bansang Pilipino at ng mga mamaya natin na dukhan-dukha ay nasa sa atin. Lumabas tayo. At pagka nagawa natin yan, hindi lang tayo kilabo sa agham. Talagang tayo mga tunay na bayani. Congratulations to the College of Agriculture and Food Science. Mga naman sa inyo Uh, just curiosity and uh, utilization, you know. Most of the uh, uh, symposiums and meetings about plant utilization I have, I have encountered are generally not only on food, but I think the uh, major gist and also getting money is on medicines. Uh, for, for us here at uh, uh, UP... Uh, College of Agriculture and Food Science, uh, ano, sakup ba natin yun? Uh, are, are we doing anything about that and which group? Um, actually, sir, um, the College of Agriculture appointed a commodity team on medicinal plants. Yes, and I'm member of that team. So, meron pong mga point person na naka-assign if anybody would want to know about medicinal plants. Yeah, professor working on uh, microencapsulation. Mm -hmm. Right now, Phil Rice is working also on uh, microencapsulating yung mga product na uh, yung, yung house, mm. yung house, okay. rice house. Rice house. Rice and rice especially house. those rice house coming from pigmented uh, mm. varieties. There are many reports that they have also, they, are, they have a uh, high nutrition. It's a sa ano, yung, yung white uh, okay. rice. So I think uh, right now, Phil Rice is successful in doing this kind of uh, probably studying the uh, contents, uh, micronutrient contents and uh, of those uh, pigmented rice. And now they are starting to microencapsulate. Maybe you can yes, also uh, work together. Yes, ma'am. I think Dr. Flores has collaboration already with Phil Rice. Mm. Question. Yes, sir. <laughs> Now, I, one time I was talking with former president of here, and he was saying about ube, mm -hmm. that uh, depende daw yung sa color ng ube, ay makakakuha ng higher yung ube, yes. propeotic. Mm -hmm. so, Pro -pre. Pre. so, ang challenge naman dito is, how can we connect with IPD? Considering that uh, kung they have a potential na uh, product, can I pay it down to the PD in order for their group to get higher yield? Diba? Parang, that's why this uh, itong, ano natin, itong symposium is very important so that we can see where we can work together. Yes. No? Like in animal science, yung, when we uh, evaluate certain uh, feed ingredients, 
I'm telling them now, why don't you, your proposal should reach up to the level of meat quality for market. Hindi lang yung tinitignan natin yung average daily gain, but rather the quality of the meat as an output of our research. So we can link with food science. Diba? So yung sana yung gusto natin mangyari na we can all work together. And as a final note, uh, if we do work together, then we come out with more publications. And if we do that, I'm challenging the, the, the faculty as well as researchers. I would like at least if we can target 80% of you to be a scientist in the level of the DOST or even sa UP system. Targetin natin, yung may ba naman ang problema lang is they don't seem to find time to write them by data properly. So let's, let's do it, no? Para, you know, if we have all scientists sa DOST, mga researchers, and also yung mga, uh, that is, uh, yung award naman na scientists sa faculty, then we really, you know, we have this. You're doing a lot of good researches. There's no reason. There is really no reason why all of you guys cannot become scientists. So it's just a matter. Uh, we will be having for the reps. We will be having a sort of a, a briefer on how to yung requirements, no? sir. Yeah, yeah, with with Dr. Villarreal, what is the requirements to be a scientist? One for the reps, and then I will try to find someone to talk about for the faculty how you can become scientist. Lahat dapat scientists, no matter what. You aim for that. And that would make the colleagues, you know, talagang sabi natin, uh, kilabo. Sinabi ni, ni, ni Alabi, Dr. Pinay. Okay? Nakulit ko si Dr. May Mendoza at ang inyong abang lingkod ay magbibigay ng seminar tungkol sa scientific career system. Kailangan mag-set ng date. Be sure to let us uh, so in advance. Ano naman yung mga schedule namin mga magisinyo na ng konti. Wala kayong iintindihin. Magsaserve lang kayo ng ng kape. Ayoko ng 3-in-1. Okay. Na may creamer. Kama in the tubig. Okay-okay na yun. Alright. Again, mabuhay tayo lahat. So, we have 10 minutes before 12 noon, and uh, it looks like uh, uh, wala na may gusto mag uh, raise ng questions, so we now give the certificate of appreciation to Dr. Israel. So thank you very much to all our speakers and yesterday's and today's uh, uh, sessions. I guess I, I believe it's just fitting to give them a big round of applause. And to say be proud that we are from the College of Agriculture and Food Science, okay? Uh, but as well as the closing comes to an end, um, we would we'd like to be reminded that this, won't, this wouldn't be possible without the people behind who worked uh, to, to make this uh, event successful. And for that, uh, here's uh, Dr. Jessalyn Labris to give us uh, the recognition for the contributors. Okay, so please don't leave because uh, this uh, symposium wouldn't have been possible if we didn't have those who assisted us and helped us financially and otherwise. So let me, like the credits after the movie, let me do this quickly, but we really feel they need to be uh, thanked. First of all, yung atin pong, uh, we solicited some help from, from uh, agencies. Uh, we start with the DOST Picard, uh, with Universal Harvester Incorporated, the UPLDFI, Rainfield Incorporated, UNACO or Univet Nutrition and Animal Health Care Company, 
Pinkies Farm, Diamed Enterprise, and uh, Snap Hydroponics of the Plant Fisio Lab of IPB. Para po, meron, kaya po meron tayong proceedings na na-print ngayon. And of course, dito po sa ating universidad mismo, uh, umpisahan po natin sa Office of the Vice Chancellor for Planning and Development for the sound system, and live streaming, and the uh, office, uh, office of the Public Relations for the Documentation. Of course, we can thank Dean Domingo Angeles for the wines which we gave out. Hindi po yan galing sa IFST. Galing po yan kay Dean Angeles. So, kay Dr. Weng Ocampo for her generous donations. The Philippine Carabao Center, the IFST, and the D3 para po sa snacks namin uh, for the last three days. And of course, the Dean who approved of uh, support from us since last year pa. So he's been very supportive. And of course, I want to thank our MCs sa IWEP po, especially po yung grupong yan sa Institute of Weed Science, uh, Entomology and Plant Pathology, our MCs since uh, Monday, our moderators and our rapporteurs. And of course pala, Dr. Paus Magdalita for the bouquet since yesterday. <laughs> thank you. May I call out our, our beloved Dean Sabango, Dr. Dean Sabango, for his closing remarks. Okay, uh, ano ba ngayon? Good, good morning pa rin. Two minutes. But I, it's just going to be a very short one. No? Thank you very much for uh, coming uh, for the past up to three, three, day, three days na tayo. And I also would like to congratulate uh, you talagang hardworking na si ang ating Associate Dean for Research and Extenso, si Joe Labios. Hindi ko alam na binabantayan ka pala ng eh, yung dating boyfriend <laughs> na asawa na ngayon, na nasa likod, si Romy Labios. Okay. So maraming maraming salamat po at nakita naman ninyo kung anong quality ng research na ginagawa sa College of Agriculture and Food Science. And as I said a few minutes ago, I'm challenging everyone. Kung pwede tayong 100% ay lahat ay scientists, Let's go for it, because that is the only way to go. Yeah? So with that, congratulations, and next year, hopefully, we will do this uh, again, maybe a lot bigger. Yun lang nga, kasi one paper per unit, per center lang to, no? But uh, if we can extend it to uh, two papers, and then uh, I would like also to, to say that Yung mga nagpipresent sa mga yung PSAS, PNP Society of Animal Science, baka naman yung mga best paper nila, yung sa crop science, yun naman mga best paper. Uh, maybe the, the unit can sponsor a monthly uh, seminar to present it. Wag lang naman doon sa albas tayo nagpipresent. Pakita rin natin sa loob. And then we can have yung nga collaboration, which I think is the key for this. Ano? Kung tayo tayo sa loob, we can have uh, collaboration and teamwork. Ay, talagang sabi nga nila, mahihirapan ng talunin ng CAPS. Although we are, sabi nga, yung sa PBB, uh, yung for 2017, eh, hanggang best lang tayo, no? So, wala tayong magagawa. Uh, hindi tayo maka go beyond that. Meron pa ba mas mataas sa best? A good bet. <laughs> wala na pala. <laughs> Very best. Okay. So, yeah, so next week we will have the Sport Fest. Uh, we are again the defending champion for Sport Fest. So, sali sali tayo doon. And pagdating ng Loyalty Day, uh, sabi ko nga, ayoko na, mag, ayoko na tayo mag-participate uh, sa float kasi nakakadalawang taon na tayo na tayo na tayo na nanalo. Ha? Tatlong taon na. Ah, take three ba? Mag-take three tayo? Ay, nako, eh... Kawawa naman yung mga ibang koleyo, hindi na sila nakatikim. But anyway, maraming maraming salamat po sa suporta ninyo sa College of Agriculture and Food Science. I think we have one more part and I think let's all join together. We will sing our... Ka huh? Oh, family day tomorrow, okay? So we will have dito sa agronomy, uh, food, lots of food and performance. Uh, hindi ko malaman kung ako yung mapapasama doon. But uh, anyway, secret daw, surprise number, galing sa mga iba-ibang unit. So with that... So before we go, uh, we are going to everyone to please all rise up. And with
aside, let us all sing uh, the college hymn and duty naming mahal. So that is our symposium. Just a reminder, our exhibits are still ongoing. Um, 
ready for viewing at the at the Mendiola Hall. So please take a visit and see what CAFS has to offer, okay?